All right, happy Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, so we're we're starting um, an evening version of Coffee and Questions, um, calling it afternoon, afternoon tea and questions. Good morning, Tootsie Avila. Happy Tuesday. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Actually, um, good evening. Yeah, we're so used to saying good morning when we do this, but so um, good evening, fashion, fabulous fashion for you. So um, yeah, this is what, what's going on. Let's give you guys a, the down low, or the, yeah, is that right? The down low, DL. Um, what happened is I've been teaching summer school in the evenings, and I've been waking up really early to do the lives in the morning, and I've been um, really cranky and not getting enough sleep, so we decided after four weeks of trying that, and um, you know, that we're gonna do it in the evening just for the time being. We may switch it up to morning, but we wanted to try out this new time to see how it's um, gonna work. So um, the uh, topic for today, Michelle, would you mind saying it while I put it on the... Yeah, so it's been a while since we last talked about sourcing um, and the pandemic started in March. Um, obviously this is a hot topic because, um, it doesn't seem like we're all going back to normal quite yet, especially in California. So we do want to talk about, you know, how it's been for us in terms of sourcing and what kind of strategies we're using to find items now. Um, uh, it's crazy because, you know, with everything being closed, our sales have been pretty steady and it's been going up since we were sourcing actually outside like during the normal period of time so we do want to share some knowledge that we've gained during this time and see what you guys are doing as well and yes let us know how it's been for you guys in terms of sourcing um please leave a comment yeah please put a comment down below how has your sourcing been going happy tuesday lynn's closet granny Rock resale and a Tar Heel flipper and a reseller's passion. Good evening. Do I keep saying good morning? Yeah. Sorry, it's like stuck in my head that we usually do this in the morning. Um, it's still coffee and questions or afternoon tea and questions. I still have my cup here that I'm working on. Um, but let's talk about sourcing, right? Um, how important it is. Of course, like good morning. Um, sorry. Good evening, Glass City Pickers. Nice to see you guys again. Good evening, Leslie. Where, yes. where are you guys sourcing? <laughs> our reseller's passion. We are late today, but we were changing the time because Marina hasn't been getting enough sleep lately. And it's been a little bit too much pressure for her to do the live in the morning. So we decided to give her some more sleep time. <laughs> and we're doing this in the evening now until um, she's teaching in the morning again right yeah we're gonna just yeah. try this out for a bit because i was cranky like not getting enough sleep for like a whole month so um but where have you guys been sourcing if you don't mind revealing your secrets good more good evening discount deal for you um put it in the comments section let everyone know we'll tell you where we're sourcing um a resource passion says she actually likes the evening yeah we've been asked if we could change our time in the evening also um so may maybe this will work out better yeah um, but for us, okay, back to how are we handling the pandemic? We're in Los Angeles. Um, as maybe some of you have heard, uh, Los Angeles is quickly developing into one of the kind of epicenters of the epidemic, epidemic, pandemic, pandemic, pandemic in the U S. So we're being more careful with where we're sourcing. And so, um, you know, we're still going out. We still go out from time to time. We try to keep it at a minimum and we have some, very kind of strict you know demands if we do go out sourcing because we don't want to catch this virus irish lux says um facebook marketplace has been awesome yes i we concur glass city picker says online and at walmart fantastic so um drop in the comments where you guys are located if you don't mind a resource passion said i've been sourcing online jomar thread up mercari more vintage items and wow. items to tie-dye yeah, that's right. And so we're going to be talking about that as well, how um, you can also be selling crafted items that you create at home. Lynn's Closet LLC said, Facebook Marketplace has been amazing for me. 
I use the keywords closet clean and cl clothing lot. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that, Lens Closet. Yeah. Yeah, we've been doing our fair share of Facebook marketing, uh, sourcing. Marketplace. Facebook marketplace sourcing and offer up sourcing. And we've had our hands full with those two places, even though a lot of people also use the neighborhood app. Yeah. Discount deals for you said mainly Goodwill, but Facebook Marketplace and my garage. <laughs> yeah, we've been sourcing in our closets as well. <laughs> so, so our strategy has changed um, and our sales are going up. And something that we've changed is that uh, we are doing targeting sourcing. Basically, compared to before, we used to go to garage sale and then we're looking, oh, let's look up how much this item is. And then it would be time consuming and also you're not sure if you're getting something good. So now we're really targeting on the items we buy and source. And um, and what we do is we, you know, like you guys, we go on Facebook, we go on OfferUp, we, t we grab the specific item, negotiate with them and do social distancing, pick up the item and look for more than one item, one of the same item and that way you can do multiple items. It's easier to list the item. You already have all the descriptions. And if the item is in demand, then there you go. People are buying, right? That's right. And so the adage still stays that research is key, yep. right? So like, um, you know, and we have this, we have an ebook called um, the, you know, top 20 reseller mistakes to avoid um, as a reseller. And it's really, it's really like a reselling book um, you know, to avoid making mistakes because that's so important. You know, when you make a lot of mistakes, you lose time and money. Um, also, wanted to let you guys know that a reseller's passion has an ebook about reselling as well. Um, it's really, really cool from what I've seen. Um, so be sure to like, you know, look into those if you guys are interested in learning. Um, but okay, the research of going to thrift stores, looking up an item on your phone per item is extremely time consuming. Michelle and I both work, we have she has a full-time job and I work as a part-time teacher, but I tend to work more hours than she does with her full-time job. So we have to be really careful with um, the spare time that we have, right? So we're gonna share what has worked for us. Of course, like, you know, I've heard many people say, like Leslie from Marie Seller Passion, say there's a hundred million different ways to do it, right? But we are very confident in the way that we have been doing it lately has been generating us about a grand a week in profit and we're pretty happy with that. Do we want to grow that? Yeah, of course. You know, why not? Um, but we but we do this and we share what we do so that you can do the same. Like, and if you guys are doing better than that, you know, congratulations. Um, please share with us what you're doing. Share with others so they can learn as well. So, yeah, we do believe in the abundance mindset. We do believe that there's more than enough for everyone out there. Yeah. And most importantly, we're helping to save the world by recycling our items. Yeah. And... Yeah, so I, I think one thing is um, think about what people are doing. You know, everyone is home. So one thing that we notice what people are doing is they're looking at through their old photos or looking at their old like home videos and there is a demand for VHS players. So we saw that need and um, we, we started sourcing a lot of VHS and DVD players because everyone is like looking for those items um, to play their videos. So. There's not a person on this planet that doesn't have VHS, old VHS videos. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Right? So yeah, that's definitely a good one. Um, but let's let's just like kind of walk you through how our process works. So let's let's talk about the VHS DVD player, right? That's a hot item. Yep. If you want to choose to do that, you'll make some money off of that right away. Um, so we take the item and we look for it on OfferUp. You can look for it on Mercari. You can look for it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, our thing that we say with the items that we know are gonna flip quickly and bring your profit is that you should be looking for these every single day, even several times a day. Now again, yes, this is a different kind of business model. Um, and every time you sell an item, you're gonna get your money back. You're gonna have extra money to reinvest, right? And so um, you'll get your money back fast. And that's kind of where our yeah. efforts have been going. So it's like Michelle said, it's focused research not going to the if you let's say you do want to go to the goodwill or a thrift store to do the same thing then this is what you would do you would have your list of about 10 items that you're searching for and what i mean by that is pick one category and really get to know it so if you're going to focus on 
DVD VHS players. Um, and every week we do a bolo, bolo Saturdays. Focus on that one item, research it, get to know it in and out. That way you know what to offer and what your profit margins are gonna be for that item. It's a little bit slower paced, but you're building your repertoire of knowledge and tools. And that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. So now we have, um, you can save searches on Mercari, you can save searches on OfferUp. Yeah. So anytime that a new search pops up of the item that you're looking for, you get a message. Mm -hmm. You get an alert. So, yeah. so you have an advantage to t get the item you know, quicker than anyone else right away. All right, so um, any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section and or use a question mark sticker. Yeah, and and talk and you know locally it's it's easy to close a deal when you're close to those people. Um so so like you guys on our for app and Facebook, um those people are really close to you. The best way to close and get the item is pick it up immediately. So <laughs> as soon as Kiki agrees. As soon as you find an item, you negotiate it because we're all home right now. You can just say, can I come right now? I'd like to pick it up immediately. That way you, um, you can secure the sale and you don't have to you know, wait and, and you know, schedule time later. Um, so that's, that's a strategy we do. Yeah, too. but another negotiation strategy is if the item is fairly priced and you don't wanna pick it up immediately, like you wanna pick it up later or tomorrow, do not negotiate the price for five bucks. Yeah. They, you'll lose a sale, you'll lose the, the purchase. Uh, Resellers Passion says that Thomas has a lot of VHS players and many other items. I just suggested offer up to him earlier today based on your past recommendations. Awesome, um, Leslie, yeah. Um, these vintage items also do really well on Etsy if you guys are willing to explore mm -hmm. that market. Uh, Lynn's Closet LLC said, I ordered a palette of women's intimate wear before the pandemic. It took several months to get the palette. I was nervous about selling bras, um, but I've been selling 50 bras Yay! a week on average. Congratulations, that's freaking fantastic. Uh, Lynn's Closet said, so don't sit on those items you think won't sell right now, 100%. Um, yes, 100% agree with that. Yeah. Cool, so um, last but not least, um, we recently, I don't know if you guys saw on our post, we sold Encyclopedia Britannica. It was a set and it wasn't even complete. Sold for a little over $100, $300 on eBay. That was free. So mm -hmm. another thing you could do is you could post um, announcements, kind of like, actually nobody has mentioned it yet, but you can post announcements on OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, um, the Neighborhood app, and say that you will take donations if you're open to doing that. Yeah, and, and here's another pain point for people who are trying to get rid of stuff. Goodwill, a lot of Goodwill stores are still closing over here in California. They don't know where to get rid of, how to get rid of their items. So if you offer to just, they, there's a lot of free items right now um, because of that. So offer to pick up for free and also look for free items, right? We've been yes, doing. and and lastly, um, you know, we're recommending our our strategy is source every day, source daily. Yeah. Uh, but But smart sourcing, not just like random sourcing, right? The one thing about sourcing every single day is that you are given opportunities to, to meet with the seller, right? When you get to the seller's place and it's a, the transaction's a little bit more human, which makes it kind of interesting. Michelle and I have had several occasions where we get to the place, of course be safe, wear a mask, social distance, and they will offer us extra things that they're selling and we super have scored in this way. Yep. Yeah, and and that that's the picking up the free things also drove up our profit margin significantly. Um, so that that's that's a little success story there. <laughs> um, the next thing you can do online estate sales. I I know a lot of people are a little bit intimidated buying things online or like doing a live auction. It's not bad. It's actually really fun. So. If you um, follow uh, estate sale companies on Facebook, um, Grayson's a big one. I don't know about other states, but here in California, Grayson's a pretty big um, estate sale company. Follow them. They make announcements. They do a pre-sale preview, preview before. So the day before, they, they do a walkthrough and show you what they have. So that time, you can look at comps and see if you want to buy them. So what they do is they take the take through the camera, you just type in, hey, I wanna buy this 
soul, and then whoever is the first person who writes it, get the item. Yeah, and you can you can follow a lot of estate sale companies on Facebook. So they, if you could follow them on Facebook, they will announce when they're doing their live, um, au- not auction, but they're basically selling it. Yeah, s- you're selling it live. I guess it is kind of like an it's auction, an auction yeah. because it's the first person who responds that gets the item. Um, but let's give you tips on that. Tips on that. We've really scored when we've attended the last day of the estate sales online where the items are discounted at 50% off. So another item we recently sold um, is a doll. We bought a doll for $12.50. It's not like a brand or anything. It's just like an antique doll with a gorgeous dress from like the you know, 20s or 30s or, or even before that. And we sold it for over 100 bucks on eBay recently. Yeah. So um, that was a score. Yep. The only thing about, you know, online estate sale is like you, you have to buy what you see. You can't physically hold it. But in most cases, you can negotiate with them that there's something wrong with it. They're pretty lenient. So, so that's that. We do have a, a couple of comments. So Irish Lux said auction, auctionninja.com is awesome for Connecticut, New York, and Massachusetts. Thank you for sharing that. And Lynn's Closet LLC said, have you guys looked into auction houses near you? Um, we have not, but yeah, we have not. I mean, we have, that's probably we have not. We want to look into in the future. <laughs> and it sounds really cool. Um, we probably will hold off until our numbers in LA decrease a little bit. We, yeah. Yeah. We're being very careful. We don't want to catch the virus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you though. So that's yeah. that. Um, another way to get items is consignment. You know, a lot, of, I'm sure a lot of your friends and family are clearing out their closet too. And if they want to make a buck or two, offer consignment. Um, so the way we do consignment is, um, and again, our friends and family, they give us stuff. They know that we sell and they give us their things. And we just sold one of my brother's old Levi's for 30 bucks on Poshmark. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mom, my mom just has donated so much to us. But, um, but basically with consignment, what we do is we'll take the item uh, we'll sell it minus all the fees and everything, um, which is about 20% at the end of the day. And then we just split the profits and we, you know, people are super happy that they're getting something cause it would have probably gone to donation otherwise. Yeah. And two, four, three, four collectibles, uh, is asking what should be charged for consignment depends. Um, for us, we do a 50, 50, de- right? That's, yeah, that's well, right we now. do, we do, we basically put it this way, right? It's, it's about 33, 33, 33, right? So it's about 33% on the fees and packaging materials and time or whatever, right? And then you split the rest in half. Yeah. Whatever is left over. Yeah. So that, that's a good way to calculate it. Lynn's Closet LLC said, I have a friend in Michigan who swears by auction houses and she makes bank. Unfortunately, I can't find any good ones near me. But maybe they're more popular in California. I feel like I've we've driven by them. We drive so much when we source. I feel like I've seen one. I've I've actually been to one, and it's a giant warehouse, and they have everything from cars to furniture to like vintage items, huge. And I was intimidated, so I didn't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, you walk into one of those, don't just buy random things, buy yeah. what you know. Yeah, I mean, buy what you know. these guys, like, trust me, these guys, when you walk, they know what they're doing. I was watching them bid on cars. They know, so I, I don't think we're quite there yet. But again, you can find <laughs> you can find government auctions online. Um, oh, yes. There's this, uh, there's this website that we... That we have signed up for. What is it called? It's called Estate well, Sales. Uh, yeah, EstateSales.org. Um, there are a lot of government. What do you call it? They're government, government auctions. Government auctions. So yeah. they seize homes and they seize, you know, I don't know, whatever um, warehouses, and all those items are up for sale. Um, so yesterday we saw a bunch of like vintage Nikes um, that are on sale. They're all brand new, and so you'll find good stuff there too. Yeah, there was like signed Star Wars stuff, um, autographs, a bunch of stuff. EstateSales.org, check it out. Yep. Um, the last thing is um, look for sales at retail stores. So, of course, a lot of retail stores are not doing well right now. They're trying to push a lot of sales to get rid of their inventory. So this is a good time to buy. Um, not necessarily, you may not make a sale immediately after you purchase the item. Let's say for J. Crew, 
you know, they're filing for bankruptcy, maybe it's a good time to buy from them. Um, and you know, just list your items after you like buy those items, wait for a little bit, people are gonna start look for them. Um, and maybe when this pandemic is over, then they're gonna, you know, their prices are gonna go back up and then you have a leverage to sell your items. Yeah, when you buy off of retail, um, buy things that are, you know, in season and they're gonna sell. Um, when we buy off, you know, retail and the prices are discounted, um, for us, like we haven't found a niche or anything like that. So the sales are a bit slower, but they do come in. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And we have like, if we buy a t-shirt for $7, um, sorry, we have a budget. So we don't spend more than seven bucks on a brand new shirt. Mm -hmm. And then we don't sell it for less than $28 online. So, you know, when you first get those items, they may not move because they're still available online. As soon as they're gone, as soon as there's no more, which could be anywhere between three months to six months, people are gonna come looking at your store for those items. Yep. Um, and Leslie from Marie Seller's Passion said lots of great information tonight. Thank you so much, Leslie. We appreciate the feedback. I, I think we have one more idea. The last thing is if you don't wanna go sourcing, make your own item at home. Like there's <laughs> so much you can do. You can paint. You can make arts and crafts, you can make masks. I mean, that might be saturated by now, but you can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't think they are. Um, when things are in fashion, you can you can get a piece of the pie. Um, a resource passion is doing tie-dye. She, yeah, that's really popular right now. Um, a lot of people jumped into making masks and things like that. Um, yeah, if you can make your own things at home, yeah. right? recycle, upcycle your items. And, yeah. You can sell them on Etsy, and people are very interested. There's this huge, huge uh, movement with young people, young folks, mm -hmm. and even older people who want to save the planet, and they want to buy handcrafted items. Uh, so, yeah, so for more information on that, definitely check out um, A Resource Passion, um, you know, her, her account, and also um, Girly Girl Style, her account. She does a lot of that as well. Um, a Resource Passion said... Uh, I make over a thousand dollars or more a week with handmade. That's there you go. That's fantastic Yay. right there. That's a niche right there. So if you're feeling crafty, you know, or you just enjoy doing crafts, you don't have to be Picasso. Like you don't have to be like an amazing, you know, the best of the best artist out there. You just have to love doing it. Yeah. Um, and people will buy. People will support. And Fabi Fine says you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. You're so welcome. We 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 want to support the community as much as we can. So, um, Tootsie Villa says, I still haven't figured out how to sell on Etsy or how Bonanza works. Interesting. We actually want to um, provide more education because a lot of people said that they don't know how to sell on Etsy. Um, so we definitely want to put out more information about Etsy to everyone. Yeah, we're, we're working on a webinar. Our next webinar is going to be on selling on Etsy because we've had so many, we do a lot of Etsy sales and we've had a lot of people uh, messages asking for help. So that's going to be our next webinar. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, Bonanza, we did talk about it briefly, yes. but we didn't get into the details no. of it. No. Is there anyone here who is selling on Bonanza? Yeah, we get some inquiries about it. Um, I have yet to dive into that. I'm still behind our listing. So thinking about adding another platform is right the now. really the, before, before we actually leave today, really really important is when you source something when you get home it's extremely important that you clean it take a picture and list it immediately because that's yes. really the key to getting your items sold right yes. is getting them listed you know don't form a you know that infamous death pile we've done it and yeah. we do it all the time yeah. but if you start selling um you know more higher profitable items with a higher ticket you have more time to take a picture of it. You have more time to list it. You don't have to do a hundred. You could just do one or two and still make the money. Yeah. The same amount of money. Mm -hmm. Tootsie Avila said, um, I feel like I stalk you. I wait on Instagram in the mornings for my notifications. You're so sweet, Tootsie Avila. We really appreciate that. Um, keep in mind, everyone, please, that we're changing our morning lives to evenings um, due to our you know, personal schedules. It's going to make it easier for us to, um, to, to do this in the evenings at least for the summer. So coffee and questions is now uh, afternoon tea and questions. Um, of course, feel free to drink coffee if you still want to, because I do. And 
Yeah, th thank you. 2434 <laughs> Collectible says, I really like this new time. Oh, good. good. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. Lynn's Closet, I am with you. She's saying, I have over 2,000 items to list. My duck pile makes me feel secure. Me too. <laughs> I like our storage. I can't even walk through our storage. <laughs> so um, it's, yeah, I mean, that's security right there. <laughs> Oh, cool. And then Tootsie Evelyn said, um, oh, I'll be here because I'm on the train doing nada anyway. How cool. You're on the train. That's so awesome. Good. Yeah. Wow. So glad we could be part of oh your Oh, my commute. God. Cocktails in question. Oh, hey. Happy hour in question. Well, think about that one. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good tip. Um, so we always end our, um, our lives with a meme. And here's the one that Michelle picked for us today. You see a... a from Notting Hill. From Notting Hill. This is... What's her name again? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts talking to... Hugh Grant. She's a celebrity person. I don't know any of the names. Um, but this is what she's saying to Hugh Grant, if you can picture it. She said, I'm just a girl standing six feet away from a boy, asking him to maybe move back another foot. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, boy. You can move back another foot <laughs> during the pandemic. Another vote for cocktails and questions. So we're definitely going to keep uh, that oh, open. Oh, we're going to get drunk. Michelle will drink the cocktail. I'll have coffee because I, I have to do my class I right get after. The, <laughs> I get the Asian glow, so I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday night. Um, please list, relist, source, and we'll see you guys tomorrow evening. Have a wonderful night. Okay. Thanks for night. joining. We appreciate it.